with estimates as of today's video of over 100,000 casualties and almost 8,000 pieces of equipment lost on the Russian side alone. It's clear vast amounts of material are being lost daily. Because the rate of destruction is quickly outpacing both sides' ability to produce weapons, Ukrainian and Russian forces have resorted to rummaging through their old weapon stockpiles to arm their troops. Today's video will be focused on both World War II weapons currently being used and what both sides still have in their inventory for future use. However, the list of vintage weapons that have not been drawn into the fight decreases with each day as the equipment losses continue piling up. Because of the massive mobilization on both sides, not all troops are being issued modern weapons, and in fact, their fathers and grandfathers would be familiar with most of this equipment. Take the Mosin Nagant rifle, for example. Chambered in the venerable 7.62x54R, the Mosin Nagant was Russia's rifle of choice for almost 60 years. Having served in both world wars, the Russian Civil War, and numerous small conflicts, the Mosin Nagant has seen the most continuous service of any other weapon on the list. Both Ukrainian separatists and Russian forces have been documented using these rifles. However, most of the troops issued these rifles are security and rear echelon troops. From current picture and video evidence, the only troops that are actually using these in direct combat are snipers. Even though they have yet to be seen in action, they could be exploding in popularity soon. According to data released by the Ukrainian parliament in 2011, the Ukrainian military held 180,000 Mosin Nagants in its stocks. Among its stores of Mosin Nagant rifles are 2,500 of the M44 Mosin Nagant. The Red Army created this carbine version of the rifle for armored and engineering troops. Still packing the same punch as a full-sized rifle, these short carbines really wore out a shooter's shoulder fast. Because of this, they saw little frontline service. Another rifle that's seen plenty of use as a sniper is the SVT-40. The Soviet Union intended the SVT-40 to become the battle rifle of choice for the Red Army. However, the German invasion of 1941 stopped any idea of mass-producing this semi-automatic rifle. Though almost a million of these weapons were made and saw extensive combat use, they were limited in production due to high production costs. The SVT-40 was so good that German units which captured them regularly preferred these rifles over their Mauser 98K rifles. The German military would even use the SVT-40 as a model for the G-41 and G-43 rifles later in the war. But after World War II, the SVT-40 quickly fell out of favor because of the SKS and the later developed AK-47. Any remaining rifles were put into storage. Accounts vary as to how many SVT-40 rifles Ukraine possesses, and the official parliament report only lists a thousand rifles, while newspapers have claimed up to 14,000 rifles. Regardless of the discrepancy, the SVT has been used mostly as a sniper rifle like the Mosin Nagant. In fact, fighters from both Ukraine and separatist forces have been photographed tricking out their SVTs with modern optics, thermal sights, and homemade suppressors. Ukrainian troops have also made use of a few World War II pistols. The TT-33 pistol was one of the most widespread Soviet pistols of the Second World War, made infamous by the photograph of a young Soviet commissar urging his troops into battle moments before his own death. The TT-33 served the Soviet war effort well. Chambered in the same ammunition as the PPSH-41, this versatile and straightforward pistol is still being issued to rear area troops. With only about 10,000 pistols in stock, these have likely all been issued out by now. As far as submachine guns go, the urban fighting throughout large parts of the country has forced troops on both sides to drop their heavy rifles in favor of fast and light submachine guns. The submachine gun of choice for both sides, even before the conflict started, was the PPSH-41 submachine gun. Shooting the 7.62x25mm Tokarev round, this submachine gun was a favorite among Soviet and German troops alike. Fighting in every battle from the invasion of the Soviet Union to the Reichstag battle in Berlin, the PPSH is an icon of Soviet history. Because of how good the PPSH is in close quarters fighting, even before the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022, the gun was widely used. As of 2011, the Ukrainian government said they had 300,000 of these submachine guns in stock, so it's no wonder they have seen so much action. A less commonly seen but functionally equivalent gun is the PPS-43. Originally designed during the Siege of Leningrad, when cut-off Soviet troops had no option to get resupplied with more PPSH-41s, the PPS-43 took off in popularity due to its no-frills mechanics. Because of its simplistic and stamped design, the Red Army opted to introduce the submachine gun as a low-cost firepower multiplier. It appears that Ukrainian and separatist troops have opted to do the same. But with only about 18,000 of these submachine guns in Ukraine, it's certainly much rarer than its PPSH cousin. But a machine gun not as rare is the DP-28 light machine gun. 
Before and during World War II, the Red Army still used the M191030 heavy machine gun as a mainstay in their automatic weapon inventory. However, evolving tactics from World War I proved the necessity for infantry squads to have their own fire support. The Soviets solved this issue by designing the DP-28 light machine gun. Still shooting the powerful 7.62x55R as the most Nagant, the DP-28 machine gun's iconic record player drum on top of the receiver makes it really stand out. The machine gun had seen a lot of action both before and after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, since Ukrainian army depots held almost 140,000 of them. Another machine gun the Ukrainian military has a lot of is the M191030 heavy machine gun. Based on the iconic Maxim machine gun from World War I, the M191030 was a 1930s upgrade to the 19th century design. Seeing heavy combat use throughout World War II, the Ukrainian military has favored it for use in fixed defensive positions due to its deadly accurate and sustained fire rate over extreme ranges. The 35,000 M191030s Ukraine possesses have shown that despite being over 80 years old, the design is still deadly and makes for a good modern weapon. However, the M191030 is one of the many heavy weapons in Ukraine to see plenty of action. The Soviet PTRD-41 and PTRS-41 first came onto the Soviets' radar after their 1939 invasion of Poland. Analyzing captured examples of Polish anti-tank rifles, Red Army leadership commissioned studies to produce a bolt-action and semi-automatic version. Thankfully for them, the production had ramped up in time for them to be put into action against German tanks in Operation Barbarossa. Chambered in the powerful 145 by 114 mm cartridge, these rifles were actually powerful enough to penetrate the armor of most early German tanks. However, as German armor technology progressed, the Soviets transitioned it from use as an anti-armor rifle toward an anti-personnel and anti-armored vehicle role. Ukrainian and Russian-backed militias have used this rifle for exactly this role to this day. But it's not just infantry weapons that have made their combat debut in Ukraine. Artillery pieces have also been dusted off. In a recent propaganda post, DPR militiamen gleefully accepted a shipment of D1 152mm howitzers from Russia. But seeing such an antique that graces museum collections throughout the former Soviet Union back in action shows just how desperate Russia has become. The D1 howitzer came about because of the artillery crunch that the Red Army faced after the disastrous 1941 campaign. Having lost huge numbers of their heavy 152mm guns, it was decided that a lighter and more portable howitzer be developed so it could displace quickly in the event of a retreat. Soviet designers came up with a D1 howitzer, making almost 3,000 of them during and after the war. The guns that were made during the war saw almost constant use. After the war, the USSR put an untold number of them into storage in the case of a rainy day, and that rainy day would eventually come in their failed invasion of Ukraine. It's unclear how many D1s are in action, but photographic evidence confirms at least one battery of separatist artillery is using it today. For all the previous weapons mentioned, there exists photographic and video evidence of their current use in Ukraine. However, those are not the only World War II-era weapons that have been used during the Ukraine war. In fact, according to official Ukrainian government data, the military holds a virtual museum of almost every make and model of small arm used during World War II. Because of the heavy fighting in Ukraine throughout World War II, it's no wonder that the government possesses all types of German small arms. For rifles, the government lists 900 Mauser 98K, and the government also claims to have 350 of the extremely rare STG-44 rifles in its stocks. The German holdings include 175 MG-34 machine guns and 40 MG-42 light machine guns too. Perhaps most interesting for its German stocks are its offering of pistols. The Ukrainians own 150 Mauser C96 broom handle pistols, 175 Wather PPK handguns, 1700 P38 pistols, and even 50 Lugers. Probably the most exotic of its holdings include 520 Star Model B pistols. The Star Model B was a 9mm handgun that was designed and manufactured in Spain. During the war, the German military routinely contracted with existing weapons manufacturers to continue producing handguns and rifles for the German army. Though Spain was neutral, the German army still procured large amounts of Star Model B handguns for its use in paratrooper units. However, the Star Model B is one of the many interesting handguns the Ukrainians still have in storage. According to official statistics, they still have 15,000 Nagant M1895 revolvers ready for use. These revolvers first came into Russian Imperial service in the late 1800s. Serving throughout both world wars, this underpowered yet handy revolver waits for its turn in combat again, but that probably won't come 
Since the 7.62 by 38 mm R ammunition it shoots is very outdated, unless Ukraine has a bunch stockpiled, these revolvers will stay where they are. Other foreign manufactured weapons available for issue include a variety of Czech rifles and machine guns. The VZ-24 was the Czech version of the infamous K-98 Mauser rifle. Produced in Brno, these rifles continued to be made throughout the war after Germany took over the factory in 1938. Primarily issued to rear area troops, the Ukrainian government came to own 500 of these rifles. The government also owns 400 ZB-30 and 100 ZB-53 machine guns. Both machine guns were also of Czech design and manufacture. The ZB-30 was a light machine gun that looked eerily similar to a Bren gun. The ZB-53 is a heavy machine gun that weighs about four times as much as the ZB-30. Both machine guns saw extensive use in rear area units to free up German-made machine guns for frontline combat. While certainly exotic, perhaps the most interesting weapon that has not been used yet is the Thompson submachine gun. The reason why the American Thompson submachine gun ended up in Ukraine was because of the Lend-Lease program in World War II. During the war, America gave the USSR tons of equipment, including American tanks, trucks, and planes. They also sent about 100,000 Thompsons. However, Thompson saw little to no use in combat due to a lack of ammunition. Instead, these were mainly relocated to rear areas where most ended up in storage, leaving Ukraine with 13,000 of them. It's important to note that though there has not been any photographic evidence of captured German and Czech weapons, American Thompsons or Nagant revolvers in combat, anything's possible at the rate at which this war has been going. But due to the fog of war, at least some of these weapons may have been issued to rear area units if ammunition and spare parts were also in storage to free up as many modern weapons for frontline use. Now go check out how Russian tactics to take over Ukraine will backfire or click this other video instead.